crooked smile, but I smile to hide the pain. Not rolling, but I'm staying in my lane. Ain't that they really care, but even careless people try to make a change. So how you judge? We get so we gon' bleed the same. See, that's the kind of shit that I hate. Fake love in the snake. Claim they loyal, but deep down they want in your place. I can't relate. I'm by my brand, man. I gotta get paid. You don't know my struggle. How you gon' speak on my name? That's the problem in this world. These niggas gossip for fame. Take the money, gon' change them, but really driving the same. How to see more bodies and people walking on stage. I can't end up behind me before I do, they see flames. So my this block nine, Ray Charles, make them go blind. Eyes closed shut, but in they mind, they can rewind. Four or five shots, make them rock, wheezy and prime. Just watch that nigga pray to God, father in time. I was just a disheveled in snow, trying to get dimes. Now I got two kids watching them grow, gotta get mine. I say I pray to protect them. I don't think that I'm better. I know that hate is a weapon. That get thrown in directions of people who steady stepping. Up those stairs of progression, I know that faith is like hope. If you don't got it, you broke. I know that hope really matters. You gotta trust you gon' grow. And if they pray for your downfall, then let them go. Back down, cause they was never around. Yeah, they smile on your face, behind they really frowns. I can't fuck with fake love, I don't want them round. You ever seen your brother's blood stains against the ground? You ever seen your aunt cook to keep the family round? But in her mind, she dying slow, but always kept a smile. Cause nowadays, you won't notice the pain if they don't say a thing. Suicides and homicides, the new order games. Cause they just want us in the system. And if we not dead, I bet they gonna play the victim. This black on black crime, I swear to God, you niggas sick bums. You kill another man, but if it's your other bitch, you care about. The shit just don't make sense, bro. Just grind and get your bread up. Like Tupac said before, niggas just gotta keep their head up. A poet and I quote it, I'ma blow because I'm messed up. I'm gonna get to the plate because it was nice, I had it stressed up. Y'all niggas just gotta try to catch a body, claim you stressed up. The independent people like the beat called Reels, real dumb. I say to end up in the pen for life to be called reals real dumb. I don't really give a fuck how they feel. Cause I'm gon' always be real. And I'm gon' always chase bills. Cause it was nice I went without meals. You can't tell me how I feel. I live in the trenches for real, yeah. I live in the trenches for real, yeah. But growing up was still a blessing Cause I was just a kid so I didn't know what was stressing Father gone, he claimed that he cared, I got neglected But I know that it made me a man, so now I'm stepping Brother died, my mom cried him tears, holding depression Beauty all in my struggle, just here to leave a message huh. I said beauty all in my struggle, just here to leave a message Nigga, just keep it up Thank y'all for coming on tonight. That was Geechee Flame. He offered his music for us tonight for the artist Spotlight. Um, thank you so much, Geechee, for us your music. We will be listening to another one of your songs at the end, and our panel is going to give their feedback on both songs. So thank you, everybody, for joining us tonight. Tonight, we are the PR Talks Relationships, and tonight we are talking about healing from heartbreak. Um, this is something that I'm sure y'all have been paying attention to my timeline. If you have, then you probably know what's going on. If you don't, if you haven't been paying attention, then you don't. But I'm just going to tell you I'm going through a lot right now. So this is really me inviting y'all here to give me some insight and for me to listen to you guys instead of me doing all the talking this time. Um, because I need y'all's help in, in telling me how you all deal with heartbreak. How do you deal with breakups? How do you you deal with you know losing someone that you you truly truly care about um and i wanted to make sure that we had both men and women on with us tonight because it's important for us to not only just hear women's perspectives but to hear men's perspectives as well so tonight we have a very sexy panel i might say um with us tonight and so i hope that you all 
are going to join us and listen in. If you would like to get in on the conversation, just send me, Tiffany Sunshine Brown, a message and I will see it and try to get you in. Um, you can also comment on this thread to ask any questions. You have to comment on our Facebook page. So our Facebook page is The Private Room with TB. So The Private Room, W, T as in Tiffany, B as in Brown, and you can comment on there and I will be able to see your comments there as well. So what we're going to do to get started, we are going to um, do kind of a round table of introductions. Everybody on our panel tonight is business owners. So they are going to tell you who they are um, and whatever information they want to share and tell us briefly about their business. So I'm just going to go in order of the faces that I can see on my end. So we're going to start with Mr. Southern Gentleman. Tell us about you. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, Tony Jackson, Southern Gentleman, uh, originally from Albany, Georgia. Yes, there's a country accent you hear. Um, have a photography business, been doing photography about 20 some odd years um, in the Hamlin Rose area. And uh, looking forward to this topic tonight. Thank you so much. And you said you're where currently? In Hampton Rose, Virginia, Norfolk, Chesapeake, Portsmouth, Virginia Beach, here in uh, Virginia. Nice, nice. Great, great. I love that area. I almost, I almost moved there before I moved to Charlotte. I was between Norfolk, Hampton area and Charlotte, North Carolina. So um, mm -hmm. I love that area and I come there often because I have a couple of friends like you there. All right. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Miss Erica. Miss Erica, tell us about you. Hello, hello. My name is Erica A. Meadows. <clears throat> I am a new poet. I'm from Durham, North Carolina, born and raised. Um, and um, I just published my first book. Matter of fact, is launching tomorrow. So I'm happy about that. Congrats. And um, thank you. Congrats. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. So yeah, I, I have infinite dimensions and it's it's in its birthing stage. Let's just put it like that. So I'm gonna leave it there. <laughs> very nice, very nice. And what is the name of your book, Miss Erica? It's called Dimensions of Me and it is a poetry book. Nice, nice. I love poetry. So I'm looking forward to, um, to reading your book. Next up is King Mac. Sadly. What's going on? What's going on? Yo, <laughs> my real name is Marcus. They call me King Mac. I'm an activist <laughs> and a advocate for young for the youth. Um, I do a lot of stuff with the youth program. I got a program called Building Boys to Men and uh a young ladies program called Girls on the Grow. I also just started my own transportation service. Um and then that that started off by being able to get those kids around so they could make it to certain events and whatnot. So, um, yeah, that's what I do. I, I love, um, being, being a part of making change. So it's good to see y'all black, um, faces right now. I love it. And I appreciate you Kings and Queens for tuning in. Yes. Thank you so much. Um, I know that, uh, Coach was really um, great with my twins and especially my son and just, you know, really just feeding into them, um, you know, being able to talk to them on their level, to be able to connect with them. Um, they're 14 now, so they were about, I believe, eight then, I think, yep, eight or absolutely. nine. I, I, yeah. eight, eight, exactly. Yes, yes. So he um, connected with the twins. Um, my daughter came on earlier to make sure she spoke to him tonight. Um, so thank you for what you're doing in the community for our kids, because our kids really do need um, role models. And I always say that our children especially need male role models, because a lot of children um, respond more to male role models in the community. Um, and so it's always important to have males out in the community helping our youths. Um, and they, there are studies that have shown that male mentors of, of children are more effective, and ladies don't take offense, but it's true, are more effective when it comes to changing behaviors um, in children um, that are in high school, middle school, high school age. So thank you so much for um, being there for our children and really just um, being you. You're, you're very easy to talk to and um, the, kid, the, kids, the kids definitely do love you. So thank you very much. 
appreciate yeah, it. Thank salute. you. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, thank you. All righty. So um, next up is, and I'm not even going to try to say what your nickname or your stage name is. So I'm just going to say Christy because I don't want to say it wrong. <laughs> Gaia, Gaia, but Christy is okay. But um, I do go by the name Gaia as well. Um, I am originally from Southern South Carolina. Oh, that's me and going back. Okay, I'm originally from Sumter, South Carolina. I am now located in Concord, uh, North Carolina. I am a cosmetologist, have my own hair studio, been doing hair for since I've been 15. Um, what they call a kitchen stylist. I'm also a poet. I am also a, I don't know, I guess you can call it rapper. <laughs> I do music. So um, I, I, I work on different projects. So I don't want to just label myself as being a rapper because I'm so much more than that. Um, and I'm a author of books that I have written that I have not yet published, but they are written. Um, they just have to, you know, move forward with the process. Um, and what else? Um, I guess that's it for right now about me. Yes. Yes. So um, <laughs> your hairstylist, and you're in Concord. So yeah, I'm going to be hitting you up. My daughter just had the, her ears go up when she heard that um, because we live in Kannapolis. So I had no idea you were that close to us. Yeah, y'all look forward to meeting you all. Yes, we will definitely, definitely do that. Um, so yes, 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 yes. And as far as you not putting yourself in the box, I love that. I don't think that artists should put themselves <laughs> in the box because as you know, there's many rappers that have gone and turned into actors or actresses, um, vocalists who have turned into humanitarian. So never put yourself in a box, girlfriend. And I appreciate yes. that. Yes, yes. Yes. Oh, and I need to tell everybody, Miss uh, Gaia is going to be performing on um, November 30th at First and Goal at my Vibes Artist Showcase hosted by myself, Enough Said. So I hope that all of you can make it. Um, at least be able to tune into the PR live red carpet to see her perform because I'm looking forward to it. Yes, I'm looking forward to meeting all of you. That's dope. Yes, yes, yes. We have, let me see, I think uh, we have King Mac, um, Ro, and Daniel are all in the Charlotte area. So hopefully you guys can come out and support Vibes Artist Showcase and Miss Gaia now that you have Absolutely. met her, her beautiful. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And Ro, she has been performing our last two showcases. So um, we have another star on here. Ms. Ro, we're going to have you go up next. Tell us about okay. you, love. So I'm your girl, Ro P. Hill. Most of my friends call me Ro. I am the CEO of Stepping Stone Production. Um, I have my own artist development company, which I means that basically whatever it is that you need as an artist, your girl got you. Um, I also sing, write, I direct videos, write treatments, um, do uh, a whole bunch of stuff, hair and a whole bunch of other therapy. <laughs> I'm a jack of all trades. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm an artist. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. So we, you know what? Bro, we should have had your music on here. I didn't even think about that. I was trying to put this together to, to replace um, our guest that had to cancel tonight. And I didn't even think about telling you to send me your music so we can play it tonight. But that's okay. I got you. I got you. The next episode. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Okay. And last but definitely not least, the handsome Mr. Daniel. Thank you. I appreciate that. Hello, everyone. My name is Daniel, and I am the founder and owner of a company called Smith Environmental Solutions. Uh, I am a indoor environmental consultant. And what that means is that I focus on mold, lead, asbestos, improving indoor air quality. Um, we clean dry vent cleanings, HVAC duct cleaning. Um, and I've been in business for 17 years. I'm originally from Virginia, Williamsburg, Virginia, spent some time in Hampton. Um, so I've been in Charlotte for the past 16 years. And it is, um, I appreciate this opportunity because as Tiffany said earlier, it is good to hear men perspective 
when it comes to heartbreak because again we are human we also have a heart so i'm looking forward to hearing everyone's perspective um and um that's it thank you so Hello. much thank you i appreciate that so let's get all of us on here now so that we can all see each other so um tonight i wanted to talk about um healing because this is really personal for me right now. Um, and I know that several of you reached out to me in the last week or two to kind of, you know, give me support and to talk to me, you know, and share your stories. And so I really, really appreciate the fact that y'all reached out to me to talk to me and to kind of, you know, a couple of y'all told me what to do and what not to do. And I had to take it. And, <laughs> and I had to take it um, and out of my emotions and get my emotions, you know, off the gram. So um, I really appreciate that, but really want to talk to everybody about your stories. And so what I would like for you to do is um, I asked you to think of when I asked you to do this episode with me, what was the first what was the first relationship that popped up in your head that was pain for, for you or caused that heartbreak for you? So um, if any of you would like to share what that relationship was and why it ended, um, again, not mentioning any names so that we can get some perspective of where we're going to be going for the rest of the, the episode. Anybody, would anybody like to share? Like to share? I, 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 I'll jump in. Um, I actually didn't go to a particular relationship. I went to a process of where I'm at right now. And I'm, I'm definitely in a process of healing through a lot of relationships. And some of the relationships are bigger than um, um, girlfriend, boyfriend. Um, it's family relationships, friend relationships, and also those. So, um, so when I got it, I was mainly just in that space of where I became... Um, where I'm at now with setting boundaries and understanding who I am and the self-worth. Cause um, a lot of us men as young age, we our self-worth, what we was taught was how strong we is or how much money we got in our pocket. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. As we move forward in our life and we start finding out, you know, those <laughs> other values, even going back to what you were saying that your son went to stay with his father and we say uh, about the things a woman can't teach. Well, a woman can raise a man because my mom gave me qualities that let me live alone. I wash my own clothes. Uh, and I think every so man to, to adventure that, pay my own bills, um, go through those things so they can value what it looks like when you're in those other relationships. But she, she can't teach a man how to be a man. And, and, and that's just going back on something we spoke about earlier. But I, I went to a space of just, just where I'm at in healing, that healing process of uh, through life, you know, through life. So th that was me. Yes, thank you for sharing that. And I'm going to ask, how old are you, um, Coach? And I'm going to ask everybody because I think age definitely is an important factor when we're talking about relationships and maturity. Um, so if you don't mind sharing, um, how how old are you, Marcus? We want some honesty. <laughs> yes, I <will. laughs> I'm for, I'm 45. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, mm -hmm. we're just we're the same age. I'm 45 as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, don't be ashamed to say you're 45. Oh, uh, sexy. Uh, uh, over 45. Uh, uh, Right. Looking good, bro. Looking good. Looking right. good. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Um, would anybody else like to share? What was the first relationship that popped in your mind when I invited you to to be on tonight? So I'm I'm gonna jump in uh because we're speaking about uh fathers and everything. Um, though I had two relationships that jumped in my mind, but what just happened to me recently, an experience that I had, um, I grew up uh, with an absent father. Um, you know, my father was not in the household, single parent mother. My mother had seven children, uh, raised five on her own, uh, and there was no man in the household. The ones that came, they went, they didn't stay long, you know? Uh, and just recently, I was doing a client's hair, and um, my client was listening to Beyonce's song, Daddy. And uh, in the moment while she's listening to the song, like I'm just listening and feeling the energy uh, coming from Beyonce from the song, and I started getting emotional. Um, and I'm, I'm stopping myself from crying. I'm like rolling my eyes in the back, my, in the back of my head, trying to stop myself from crying. 
And I said to myself, when I finished her hair, I was going to go and revisit that song and listen to the song again. And I got in my car and I put, played the song and I listened to the song nearly an hour over and over and over again. And I cried like so hard. Um, my father passed away uh, maybe like two years, I think it was two, two, three years now, he passed away. And as I'm listening to the song, I'm just thinking like, I would never have that experience. I will never know what it feels like to have a man, uh, well, my father, you know, being should have been the first man to be a protector to me, to be a provider to me, to be nurturing to me, uh, loving, to have that someone I can go to and talk to about certain things and give me guidance about other men and boys and things like that. And in that moment, uh, me crying, I realized I was healing because he was the first man that broke my heart. And all my life growing up, I've always uh, felt like I never needed him um, because my mother was such a strong woman. And I've always said that I was good without him. And even as I grew into becoming a woman, uh, he called me one day. He tried to apologize to me uh, once he got sick and everything. And I stopped him in the mix of him uh, apologizing. And I told him I was okay. I was the woman that I was to become. Um, I don't hold anything against you. But like I said, just recently, I realized all that I had buried within me, I blocked it out. You know, um, and I was really hurt. And for the first time ever in my life, I cried and I said, Daddy, I needed you. You know, that was the first time I realized I really needed that father figure. I really needed that man in my life. Um, at, at, you know, growing up and been through divorce and started dating again and, you know, meeting a man who's coming into my life to be a protector, to be a provider, to be nurturing, to be loving and rejecting him, pushing him away because it all feels uncomfortable to me. You know, it's, it's, it's awkward. I'm not used to it. You know, I'm used to being the dominant female uh, figure, the independent woman and everything and not allowing a man to come in and play his role and do his part. You know, so it's something that I'm still learning and healing and, and growing through myself, you know? Hey, mm -hmm. if, I, if I could say something to that right quick, to the woman, um, and that's why I started my girls program, because um, if the if the young lady does not know what love, what a love feels like, a hug feels like with no cost, then they'll find themselves mm -hmm. in toxic relationships or being overwhelmed by uh, us, it, uh, men in the, in the future, if she does not know what a hug feels like with no cost, cause one day that hug will come with a cost, and and if she doesn't know, then again she'll find herself in toxic relationships and and, and, and maybe even abusive relationships because her putting his feelings first in in front of hers because she don't understand that if she don't have that. So it's good that you got through that, baby. Yes, thank you. Okay, so. Um, I'm the person who was married to a alcoholic and a schizophrenic for 15 years. Um, and I'm just going to put this disclosure out there. I'm a cancer, okay? So I cry about everything. And so if you see me crying or you see tears, don't think of it as like I'm hurt or whatever. Sometimes it's tears of joy and relief that I'm not in that situation no more or whatever. So, um... Yeah, that was me. And when I say I went through for better or for worse, richer or for poorer, you know, I took my vows seriously, um, didn't cheat, none of that for 15 years. Then I had girlfriends and everybody saying, you know, you should go ahead and get you a boo thing because, you know, he not right. But, you know, I was growing, I'm a preacher's kid. So, you know what I'm saying? I grew up in the church and, you know, when you get married, they say it's to death do you part. And so I took that seriously. So it caused me to go through a lot of stuff that I necessarily shouldn't have went through, but I'm glad I did because it made me into the woman that I am today. It made me a stronger person. It made me have a story to tell for other young ladies who, you know, be might be going through a similar situation that I was in. You know, I went through abuse, not just physical abuse, mental abuse, um, emotional abuse, sexual abuse. And yes, it can be sexual abuse from your husband as well. So, um, yeah, that's my story. Yeah, well, we, we glad you followed up. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, my story is I came, I come from a uh, Christian background, church six days a week. Um, never really was exposed to the world, in a sense, um, and it. It caused me not to experience a lot of things from music to black culture to understanding who I was as a man in general, because I only see I only saw those type of men. Um, I was um, I was abused by a family member uh, when I was five years old. Um, And in that environment, when I came of age to come out and tell my family it was pushed underneath the rug that we so experienced so many times. And there's not a lot of men that, that talk about it, but it happens to us just like it does with women. I think that platform has opened up for women to say they've been abused sexually, um, verbally. But for men, it's like, if we say that, that makes us soft. That's that makes us not a man. And I'll tell you today that because of that healing process, um, because of me telling that story, it has helped so many other men go through that and within my family. So with that testimony, we all have a story. So, you know, I could say that my heart broke at five years old, not from a woman's relationship, but from trusting of a family that sometimes I still feel that I can't have a true relationship with a man simply because of that. So again, I'm healing through that process. Um, I'm just realizing that, um, you know, it is what it is and I don't judge people from the beginning. It's just really more of seeing where they are. I mean, I think allowing, not allowing people to take advantage of me because I mean, I was five, I was, I was helpless um, at a sense. Um, I didn't know just like what five-year-old person knows to speak about what was going on. It's, it's kind of like normal or not normal, but it's kind of like, you know, no different than eating a, a certain type of food that is given to you by a family member. You, you know, you trust them. So right. as an adult is really more of trying to understand that everyone is not like that. Every person that I meet is not like that. So, but my first thought when the conversation came up was a past relationship um, that um, it was more of I sacrifice happiness for love. Um, it's not really my heart wasn't broken, but my my happiness was on the line of trying to figure out, do I sacrifice happiness for love? And I sacrificed and I did. You know, I, I left my last relationship so that I can be more in a happy and peaceful place. So, no. Well, that was good. And um, I'll jump in and share my story real quick. Um, listen to a couple of you guys talk already because um, give me a different perspective and kind of different uh, path on what I thought I was going to talk about. Um, originally, one of the first heartbreak situation I thought about happened to me actually back in seventh grade, right? Um, you know, I grew up watching the Disney Channel and I go I'm fifty three, so I'm probably one of the oldest members on the board or the oldest member on the board. So oh, I watched well, Disney Channel. Me. <laughs> <laughs> like don't crack. <laughs> but I um watched a lot of Disney movies and so you know, growing up we all had the whole image of, you know, husband, wife, kids, picket fence, blah 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 blah, you know, happily ever after. So that's basically how I lived my life. Was part of a church growing up, just like you, Daniel. So everything just seemed so laid out so perfectly. But what happens once you step outside of those four walls at home and four walls of the church, yeah. that's not how life happens. You know, um, so as a young man, again, you know, you're taught, like like uh Marcus said, to be strong and you know how how you gotta provide for your family and all those type of things. But um, so in seventh grade, I actually had a girlfriend uh, meet me at the skating rink. And, you know, I'm trying to show off to my family and all this kind of stuff. And come to find out she didn't want to be with me because I didn't have the, the newest pair of uh, shoes that came out um, that year or whatever. So she broke up with me on New Year's Day <laughs> at the mm. skating rink. Oh, wow. mm. but, um, but, but thinking about those different things, um, Marcus also mentioned about 
heartbreak doesn't always just come from relationships. Um, someone else mentioned about, you know, you can have it from family members, um, broken relationship with, with my dad, because my mom and dad got divorced when I was young. And of course, dad was, it was his fault about everything until I found out the truth about some things. Um, and as I got older, and another stigma uh, Tisman had to get rid of was that it's not okay to see therapists or see, you know, seek help. Mm-hmm. Once I start doing that, mm-hmm. I also realized, you know, one of my friends tell me all the time now, hurt people hurt people. You better know it. So they do. Um, some of the relationships that, that I've had heartbreak from, for me now, I had to realize also that I have caused heartbreak and I have to accept that responsibility and that helped me grow and try to continue on with, you know, how I can be better now in life. Absolutely. That's what's up. Thank y'all so much for sharing your stories. Um, so tonight, you know, we you brought up some really good um, points about relationships and kind of where, uh, how childhood can affect your future relationships. And so um, for the ladies that are on, do, were your was your father present? And I know um, Gaia, you said that your father was not present. But for Erica, was your dad present? And bro, was your dad present in your life? And do you believe that not having your father present in your life has affected you in your relationships or having them in your life? My father was in my life, but uh, to this day, he's just a dick. Um, so he was abusive verbally, physically, emotionally. So he didn't help me at all. Um, My relationships that I stepped into were toxic. Um, That's where you can, I can actually see and actually live the cycle. Like you grow up with the abuse, you marry into it. And um, the marriage was the worst, but, his was so long term that it affected everything in a negative way for a long term for me. And that's cool that you say that. One one thing about what I what I witnessed from everybody that's on the panel, um, one one process about healing, no matter what it is, is being able to say that shit out loud. Mm-hmm. Yeah, being able to say once you once you um, I think it, accountability, um awareness and then being able to say it out loud being able to say that with with and and with confidence you know uh, once you get past that stage of saying you know you've been hurt because um the only thing that can heal the only thing that's more just as powerful as love is time Mm -hmm. that's the only other thing that can keep up with love is time because that's the same thing that created that love and that's the same thing that's going to heal you in that space we don't know if it's going to be a week. We don't know if it's going to be a month. We don't know if it's going to be five right. years from now. But that right. time is the only thing that can run a race with love because love is so powerful. Some people think it, it takes a lot to love. It's real easy to love. Now, mm-hmm. now it's levels to love. You know, being in love and, you know, um, even self-love. You know, we love ourselves enough to eat when we're hungry. But not enough to eat healthier, so we live longer. So, so, right. so, so it's levels, and once you get those levels of love, we learn how to love the other people around us, and to accept a certain level of love and what love we we want to accept. So, just to hear everybody talking, it feels good to be able to hear you say that out loud, especially with you know a, a, some of us probably ain't never seen seen each other ever day in our lives. But to be right. able to have that conversation, yeah, right. that's that's great. This is needed a lot of times, and, and people don't do it. So, yo, I, I just feel refreshing to me. I, so I just wanted to say that. So, no. I want to um, piggyback off what you said about it being levels to love. <laughs> that is um, something I've grown to learn um, because there are people that have been willing to extend their love to me. Um, but because I've done so much healing and uh, growing and spiritually evolving and um, my a- awareness about life has evolved, um, what they consider love to be is not necessarily what I'm willing to accept as love. 
because my level of love has grown. Um, and what was once love to me is no longer what love is to me now. So when I was with my ex-husband, we was together since I was 15. Um, at, you know, at that age, I was probably 150 pounds when we met, you know, nice curvy shape. Um, I got up to 336 pounds. You know, um, I went through a whole lifestyle change. Um, I awakened spiritually and we were in two different spaces. So as I was growing and I was healing and I was going through these changes and evolving and learning things, he remained the same. He wasn't he wasn't willing to go through the changes. He wasn't willing to heal. He wasn't he just thought I was you know, he just wanted the old Christy. He wanted the old me back. He didn't want the new person that I was becoming. You know, he was okay with our love uh, where it was at. And I can admit that I was toxic. I was I was the abuser. You know, um, I was the angry one, always wanting, wanting and willing to fight. <laughs> you know. So, um, but he, but he, he was okay with it. He accepted it. He got used to it. He got comfortable with it. We've been together from 15 to I was 30 something years old. We got married, had children, you know, all that. Um, but I've grown to learn what love really is and knowing that as a woman, um, uh, for me now, love is nurturing. You know, it's nurturing, it's being able to actually listen to my man and um, or people in general, not just a man, but being able to listen and being nurturing to that person um, and, and being uh, bringing healing energy uh, to people and, and not being so dominant and controlling and um, so overly independent, you know, and giving a man his space and allowing him to do him. You know, and I think that is very important because as women, especially women today, I feel like a lot of us, we so dominant and so independent to where we do not allow men to have that space to be a man. Um, because me, for instance, I came from a single parent home. So I saw my mother being in control. I saw my mother run the show. I saw my mother pay the bills. My mother was that, you know, so that's who I became. You know what I'm saying? So it, it takes a lot to learn to allow a man to be a man and be in your space if he's a heal healthy man, you know? <laughs> so that's important too as well. But I just wanted to piggyback off the levels to love. There, there are different levels to love. Absolutely. And to answer yeah. Tiffany's question, my father has always yes. been there, still there to this day. Um, my father was not married to my mother. They were together like two months after I was born and then they separated. But I thank God that my father had another woman come into his life who literally took me in. She's been in my life. I'm 45. She's been in my life since I was two months old. You get what I'm saying? And him and his wife showed me a great example of what a relationship should be, which made me want to become a wife, which made me want to, you know, do all the things that a wife should do and have all the things that a husband should do. Because my father was a great example of what a man should be. And I found that with my, I've been married twice. Um, and with my, both of my husbands had qualities that my father had. So when they say you marry your, your parents, you really do. Because you always see something in your in what your upbringing was that you see in your mate, which makes you say, hey, they're going to be a great fit for my family because, you know, my dad did this or my mom did this. And so um, it really influenced me in getting married. But I have to say, as a woman, I did like I, my daughters are grown now. And I had to go like and apologize to my daughters and tell them like, I'm sorry for being a toxic woman. I'm sorry for being a toxic mother because like I always grew up in a two parent home, whether it was in my mother's house or whether it was in my father's house. And so I wanted that for my children. So I put up with a lot of stuff just so my children could have a two parent home. And so I had to apologize to my daughters and tell them like, you know, I taught you good morals and standards and what a woman should be and how you should conduct yourself and what you should do. But I was a terrible, when I say a terrible example of what 
a woman should put up with in a relationship, what she sh how she should conduct herself in a relationship. Because in the beginning, I was that meek and humble wife, submissive, you know, did all of the things that a wife should do. But then after years of them cheating on me, after years of them, you know, physically abusing me, mentally abusing me, I became the abuser because it was like, you know, I wanted to fight back. It was it was like, you know, you're not going to sit here and treat me like this no more. You're not going to handle me like this. So I became the aggressor and I got my first mm. charge of attempted murder at 36 years old behind a man because, you know, what I'm saying he decided he wanted to flip out one night and put his hands on me. And I stabbed, ended up stabbing him five times. And my children saw this, you know, what I'm saying like my daughter saw this. Not just my daughter, but my son. He saw this as well. So I'm, I didn't only teach my daughters how to handle themselves in a relationship, but I taught my son as well, like, you know, how a woman can act if you provoke her or if things, certain things happen and it wasn't good at all. At all. Wow. Uh, right. uh, yeah. That's deep. That's deep. Second, um, jumping off yeah. with uh, also what Margaret said about the levels of love and um, then you adding on your story about, you know, the love you thought you were given. A few years ago, and you know, to be cliche ish, um, I learned about the, you know, love languages. One thing about trying to love somebody or even receive love, everybody doesn't love the same way, and you can't give the same love to everybody. So from those five love languages, my, me myself, I love acts of service. Um affirmation, and I like physical touch. Um, as far as the gift receiving, I, I'm not a big gift receiver, never have been, because I grew up with two sisters, so they always got to get the gift, so that's never been my thing. <laughs> but you got to learn to to know how to be able to teach other people how to love you. Absolutely. You know, so, um, like, some people would want to be up under you all the time, like it's like it's the first week you met somebody. Other people, after you didn't get comfortable with them for a while, hey, get on out here, like you said, you know, give a man his face. Yeah. Well, I'm a, I'm a man now. I've grown up to to not just perceive, believe that a man has to be strong and he can't be lovey-dovey and kissing and hugging. I like affection. I like holding hands and walking on the beach, you know. I like public displays of affection, <laughs> so I'm not one of those men that, that don't like that. But um, you have to be able to show the people Give them the love they need, and you also have to be able to teach them how you need to be loved too. And there's a there's this point. thing. That's a really good point. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, so I've realized in my life that nothing is universal. You know, we we use this word love, and it's supposed to suppress everything, and that's not the truth. That's not the truth. You know, you have to. You have to de develop what you love. Like some people will love tomatoes, but don't love ketchup. Where the two look the same and everything. So you may love a woman, but you may love, but you may not love that she wear nails or eyelashes and things like that. So when I've learned that if I tell a woman that I'm dating, that I love her, I have to now, it, well, I have to explain what it is about her that I love. So she understands right, right. that it may not be the makeup. It may not be the nails. It may not be right, the weave. Right. It may not be the high heels, but it may be my, you know, what I experience as love language. It may be when she cooks for me or when she does this. So I think open communication and honesty is one of the mm -hmm. uh, the best things that I have ever learned by the relationships that I've been in. So being open and honest um, and not thinking that, you know, men would think that when women say, will you cheat on me? They, and they're asking you to be honest, be honest with them because if they can't accept your honesty, then they're not going to really accept anything else from you. They may not like it, liking it and respecting it is two different things. You know, if you if you don't ask, if, if you if, if a woman asks me a question and I'm honest with her and she's like, uh, like the whole thing, there's a conversation that um, women women would say, if a man just want to fuck me, just let him just just say it right out front. 
So you can be honest. And men would be like, I ain't saying that, but they'll go and invite you out to dinner and everything and pay with the expectation that I'm going to fuck you. And when you, <laughs> why you so we, you know, so we have to understand that love is not universal. It comes, it comes at a point of you can meet somebody the first day and you can love how they smell and it's okay and you shouldn't. And I think people turned off. Sometimes people get turned off or afraid to say it. You know what? I've seen you. I've been on two dates with you. I love the way you smell. And I think that you're opening that guideline to be comfortable and saying the word love because that instead of saying I love you and, and right. give people right. the understanding that I'm being open and honest with you. And that's something, you know, I'm 47 and that's something that I barely, rarely heard my dad tell my mom that he loved her, but he showed her that he loved her. So growing up, when I got married, I thought it was okay for me to show instead of, even though I said it, it was really more of my actions didn't match my words to the woman that I was married to. So, and I realized over time that love is not universal. That if you, I say like this, if anyone in here really wants to experience a different type of love, Speak stuff into existence. Speak that you want to love unconditionally. Once you realize how to love unconditionally, you stop judging. You start accepting. You start being honest. You start being open. Because unconditionally means that no matter what, I'm going to love you. Like the young lady said, you know, about the um, through thick and thin, through best or worst. That's unconditionally. And if we can focus on that, there's nothing, you know, if we can focus on that, I guarantee you that your relationships will be stronger and better because you got to be honest from the jump. Yep. That's dope. That's dope, my brother. So I'm going to come in here real quick because is, is it really possible? Is it healthy? to love somebody unconditionally. We've had examples of marital rape. We've had examples of domestic violence. We've had examples, we've had a couple of people say about infidelity and cheating. So it's one thing to love somebody and it's okay <laughs> to have unconditional love for somebody, but not how is that healthy to have unconditional love for somebody. So that's just my take on it. Um, I think we have to respect ourselves and respect who we are as an individual, but also we have to know, and I think it was uh, Marcus that said that we have to know our worth and what we will and will not accept. And we also have to talk about boundaries um, as well. And so unconditional love, I only have that for my children. I have that for my children and my mother. I don't know that I can extend unconditional love to anyone else because to me, when you say that I, I love you unconditionally, that means that I'm giving you permission to do what you want to do because you know that I'm still going to love you and I'm still going to accept you for who you are. When sometimes that's, that's not always healthy to do. That's not what they, that, that's not what no. that means. So yeah. It's, it's like, like Marcus said, it's boundaries in That's anything that you do. Even, even if you say that you got an open right. relationship or, you know what I'm saying, in friendships, there's always boundaries to everything. And so when you love someone unconditionally, I look at it as everybody got shit with them. Everybody got flaws. And so you can't expect someone to put up with the flaws that you have, but you're not willing to accept someone else's flaws. Now that's not to say like you have to know what's acceptable for you because what's better for me might not be better for you. What's worse for me may not be worse for you. So that's why I say you have to set up boundaries and know like what you are and aren't willing to ac accept. And you have to state that fact from the beginning. And that's not to say that you can't give people chances, but you, when giving people chances, you teach people how to love you. So if you continuously, like when my husband would cheat, well, my husbands, when they would cheat on me, you know, I was taught for better or for worse. And to me, I thought that meant that, you know, I was supposed to put up with stuff mm -hmm. like that because in the church, you don't get divorced. It's till death do you part. So 
You know, I thought that I was doing the right thing, but then the older I got, I started to learn that, you know what, that's not right. You know what I'm saying? He already stepped outside the marriage, so the marriage is over. You know what I'm saying? So once he stepped outside of that box and said, hey, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. At that point, he literally divorced me and told me he didn't want to be with me no more. So at that point, I had to start moving differently, which means that the unconditional love that I once gave you, I had to rescind on that and say, guess what? I can't do this anymore. My boundaries and my, my has changed, which means I will no longer allow you to do certain things to me. And the person who loves you and respects you, they're going to accept the fact that you're growing in certain areas and that you're putting up certain boundaries and restrictions and they're going to move accordingly. And if they don't, then that's not the person for you. Well, <clears throat> I'm as glad that y'all said something about the unconditional love. Um, two of my kids, they got the same mother. Um, they taught me a lot when it comes to unconditional love. Um, it, their mother was very toxic. Um, she played a, a very major role in tampering with our relationship at, as me being a father. But as my kids got older, I made it very clear to them that your mother cannot tell you how to love me. You get to love me exactly how you want to. But I could not beat the power that she had, no, despite the, the, the father that I had been um, or whatnot. So they taught me very well about this love thing. So... Um, when they decided to move on and say, you know what, I I'm taking my mom's side, that whatever, it, it didn't matter. At, at that point, they taught me something as my flesh and blood. So when I meet somebody that's not my flesh and blood, I'm definitely setting boundaries. And then I don't have no problem with you walking away because my kids just walked away. That gave me a sense of right. uh, how I, how I challenge love and how I look at the love thing now. Um, it even took me through some traumas of abandonment. You feel what I'm saying? To the point where I I, I, I felt hurt behind that. So um, with my own insecurities um, coming from places that I came from in some of my relationships, you know what I'm saying? Because um, because now that I'm here, I can be I can be more honest about where I, I remember being a cheater. Right now, though, those same things that I did affect me now to how I trust in another situation where all of my all of my um uh insecurities didn't come from somebody else some of my insecurities and i will say 80 percent of my insecurities came from me from things that i done in my life you know what i'm saying the, the person i had been you know what i'm saying so when i think about a genuine love um I, I love you for who you are. If if that's if that's my friend, my homeboy, we we drink a beer and watch a uh, watch a game together. Then that's what I do. I, I keep it right there. If me and her go out to eat and th and that's what I keep it right there, and and until that space is natural, there is no force in place for me. I'm not gonna force anything, and I don't got no problem with you going that way because guess what? If I can't if I ain't talked to my daughter in two years. You think I care about talking to you right now? Nah, that don't, that really bother me at this point. And they taught me that. They gave me that energy in my faith. Love to say people are going to be who they're going to be. Your ten toes is your ten toes. And one thing I learned is everybody's not going to love the same. Everybody's not going to love you the way you might love them. And I, and I remember dishing out that type of love in life from friends to everybody. Who I found out, hey, you would you wouldn't let me sleep. You wouldn't let me sleep on your chair for six months. But I let you slip on my chair with my kids, my girl in there and everything. But but when I think about it, you wouldn't have let me slip on your chair for six months. And those type of spaces strengthened me in the area when I think back. That, that, was, that was damaging places now. Now it strengthened me to be a little bit more honest. Um, when it comes to women, I'm telling you exactly who I am. You're gonna, you're gonna, if you're going to like me, I don't want to put on a mask and then have to pull the mask down later because I wasn't who I said I was just to, to mentally stimulate you or sexually stimulate you. I'm going to keep it G from the beginning to tell you who I am, how many kids I got, how I move, how I do and do that. And if you decide to like me, if you decide to go further with me, that's because you met the real me and I don't got to come back. Matter of fact, why would I want to fake and be somebody else? If I'm if I'm somebody else all day, who's gonna be me? You know what I mean? So <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna be 100 up the gate, but I can't tell you that's been me all my life. In these last five years, 
I, I watch myself progress uh, to a different space. And um, I can only be uh, I'm excited about the new space I'm in with setting the boundaries. Because, again, y'all know how men is. We kept quiet. We kept quiet about a lot of stuff. We we didn't say a lot of stuff. We you know uh, we 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 don't want to say, hey, baby, that macaroni wasn't good. You know, we we putting mm. everybody before our own. <laughs> we don't want to say it because um, we we if you, if we thought about going into relationships, a woman goes into a relation a dating relationship about everything she's not going to do. We have to go in trying to get the manager position off the rip. Mm. We have to. We go in and open that door. We go. Our conversation got to make sense. Everything. We we go into that space, and we're afraid sometimes. And we don't we don't say that, but we're afraid sometimes to say what we may want to feel, or even say the word no. You know, until you get later down the line. But if, if we learn how to set those boundaries and set that up front, then we get an honest relationship. We get an honest friendship. We get an honest whatever this is from the beginning. And, and I promise you, my kids have really taught me that those two really taught me that 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 levels of love. It. And so guess what? I love them exactly. And I asked God to deliver me from those spaces. So now I love them exactly how they love me. It's fine. It's cool. I'm cool with that. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to love anybody that steps in my love zone exactly how you love me. And that, that's me. Yeah. And love is also yeah. about is about <laughs> maturity, <laughs> too. You know, like you can, like when I first learned about relationships and and what I thought was love, I wasn't mature enough to understand what it took for me to be a boyfriend or, you know, a friend in that. And now as I'm as I'm older and I've been through relationships, I, I understand that where I am now as a man, with me understanding what what um unconditional love is me being open and honest it's easier for me and i'm more mature it's easy for me as a brother said it's easy for me to be open and honest and tell you what i want now is that a hundred percent no but sometimes it 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 takes a certain type of conversation it takes a certain day or it takes a realization and it takes you know sometimes praying God, how do I how do I move like this? How do I listen more, you know? And when something is revealed, then I make those changes that were before I, you know, I didn't really want to ask for help. I thought, again, I'm the man. I know what, you know, what I say goes and I ain't trying to change for nobody. Either you love me or leave me alone. And all that is going to do is have you being alone. <laughs> yeah. If I can jump on that, um, if I can touch on that whole open and honest type thing real quick. Um, so my question to everybody, who who on the panel tonight is single? Me. I, I, I raise your hand. I, I am single. Who is single? <laughs> okay, so when I, when I say single, because I seem like I have to clarify this sometimes when I ask. Who is you gotta say it married? twice. You gotta say single, single. single. You single, single. single. <laughs> single, single. <laughs> I saw Tony. Single, single. Yeah. I saw Tony. I saw Ro. Erica. Hey, I'm about single. Like I can Erica bring me a night bag. She, okay, so when I think I of single, I'm asking who's not married, and then who is not dating anybody right now, like exclusively. Raise a hand. I, I am not. I'm not dating. I'm not. single, single. I can bring a spinner night bag. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, Look, brother, tell me they call that a whole bag. Your, you, you, why do you, you feel right now, or what is the reason why you're single right now? And what is it that you need in your next relationship? Look, like that, I said, that'll actually before, tie into what I was about to say. Anybody to go, as far as the, uh, the being open and honest. Having been someone who, you know, growing up, you, you always thought how you, you felt like you thought how your relationship was going to be. As a man, you go in and you want to say you want to be a provider, you want to, you know, have one wife, you don't want to cheat, all those different type things. But society and peer pressure, even as a 20 some year old man and depending on your life situation in the military, it changes you. It makes you change your mind. Well, you have the choice to make. A different you know, decision than, than staying faithful and all that kind of stuff. And then once you get through that, 
Okay, I want to be open and honest. Well, honestly, I only care you so so far because then it comes to the point of, well, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings with how I feel and what I'm actually going to tell you about, whether it's being involved with a woman, whether, you know, some woman told you you look good today and you can't go home and tell your wife that or whatever because then she can't handle it. So you start keeping certain things away from her. And then once you do double certain parts of information and then they react a certain way, and it gets worse over time, then you don't want to deal with the reaction. Then you keep start keeping those things to yourself. And then another part about being open with someone, when you lay down what you expect them to, what you expect an open relationship to be, you lay down the laws and if they say, okay, 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 you're thinking that they're okay with it, but they're only saying okay because that's what you're telling them you want to do. But then later on, they feel like they want to do something different and they do that, then they throw that in your face. Well, that ain't what I wanted to do in the first place. Well, you, you agreed to it. Right. So me being single now is the point of, yeah, I can still, like Mark say, I'm a, here's how I am, here's who I am. That's all good, too. But you have to be able to honest with yourself even saying that because is that what you really want to portray to that person? You know, to, to, to allow them the chance to get to know you or not? But if that's the case, then you just roll with it. I don't really want to be single at some time, you know what I mean? But I, I got to be honest. Okay. Um, so, Tony, I'm going to ask thing. you, because you, you just gave us a lot. I'm going to ask uh -huh. you, why are you single right now? Why are you single right now? And what do you need because in your next relationship? <laughs> Since my last situation, I kept saying, I want to be, I want to have peace. I want to have peace. I want to have peace. Since I have been so peaceful. Like, like not having to answer different crazy stuff, not having to do like, my peace and happiness. That's why I'm single right now. I'm I'm living life and loving it. <laughs> that's why. And I think that's where I am. For me, I had the long. Okay, all right. I also saw Erica. Erica, you raised your hand and told us that you were single. Tell us, tell us how long have you been single and why are you single and what do you need in your next relationship. Um, I've been single for some years, years, um, but I had to begin to heal. I had to learn how to love myself. Always been a caregiver of sorts, um, being the oldest of three with the two other, my two other siblings being significantly younger than me. Um, so I had to, my son said to me, mama. You know, all that love that you give everybody else, because I see it. I need you to turn it around and give it to yourself. Best advice ever, right? So now that I know how to love me and I love me like I do, which when you do that, you automatically set the boundary because you don't want to fuck up <laughs> again. You know what I'm saying? So you set those boundaries. That's automatic. And for me anyway it's automatic and i think i'm not really i'm not really in a place that i'm ready to be in a relationship with anybody i'm fine right where i am right now and i still have to do more work on me because i want to be ready you know when whoever he is comes along i want to be ready you know so i'm continuing to work on me not to say that I don't have people approaching. And, you know, I've had people say, you know, you're just cold. Okay. It is what it is. But I'm being honest. And you can already tell I don't really mix words. So with that being said, I'm good. I don't need anything right now. That's I love myself. I'm good. So I have a, I have a question. Um, um, so what was your name again in the, in the red shirt? Erica. Erica. Yeah. You said when you're ready, do you think that you would ever get to that point to where you say I'm ready? Yes. And and does that readiness, do you think that it would match that man in his readiness? Because, I, you know, I think sometimes we put a, a high level on on when I'm ready to date, meaning mm -hmm. get myself together. But mm -hmm. ready, I think sometimes we, we may meet somebody that we think we're ready for. And that person could be the person for us. However, sometimes we may have to realize that, oh, I'm not ready for this, but I, I can get ready. So 
I guess I'm just saying it from experience that I thought that I was ready for this type of relationship. And when it came, I realized that I wasn't ready and I had to grow into that relationship. Right. So just like I said, not saying that there's anything wrong with that. Understand mm-hmm. is almost like saying, you know, when I get a million dollars or a billion dollars, I'm going to do this. And when you get it, you do nothing. Absolutely. <laughs> that. <laughs> so see. understand that preparing, preparing for that relationship, you know, unless there's something tangible, meaning I want to buy a house, I want to be this, I want to be that. Those are goals. But being ready for relationships, especially when you don't know who God is going to bring into your life, that's the part that, in my experience, in my advice, not opinion, because I think different. I think opinion is something that no one is like the greatest commodity. Everyone can have an opinion. But my advice is something I experienced that I thought I was ready for this type of relationship. And when I got it, I realized I wasn't ready. And I had to formulate and I had to kind of like start all over to make it work. I think for me, being ready is just me loving me, me taking care of me right now because I've been so long years taking care of somebody else. I need to take care of me. I just started. I just uh, I, I just removed myself from the abuse. You understand? Gotcha. It's only mm-hmm. been two months. You feel me? Okay. So with that being said, I have to work on me. I'm not yeah. ready. I will go into something and I'm fearful that I will make it toxic. Yeah. I don't want to do that. So okay. I need to continue to work on me right now. Uh, brother, what what on, on that I was thinking like sometimes we, we ask God for certain things and um because it does not look like we expected to look, we let it pass <laughs> by. So a lot of us I, I feel like I maybe passed my queen up a time or two because it, it what it didn't look like what I imagine in my head, but I asked for it. It's kind of like you being out there in that water and you're saying, hey, 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 God, now you going to save me. I'm about to drown. They say, well, I just saw a branch by that branch was going over there to the land and you let that branch by because you're looking for a damn boat. You it wasn't see? big enough to carry you, huh? Right. You know what I'm so, I think a lot of the relationships, we, we pass up our kings and queens looking for. Uh, what we think it should look like and, and instead of, you know, accepting what it could be, you know what I mean? Um, for me, I would say my insecurities probably keep me from um, being in a re- relationship and being single my insecurities. And I won't say just because of somebody else. A lot of my insecurities come from, again, a place that I was at, you know, years in my life that, you know, that hold me back because I've been so now it's hard for me to trust because of the bullshit I done. You know what I mean? It's hard for me to trust somebody else because I did some bullshit. You know what I mean? And I have to, I have to, um, I have to digest that. You know what I mean? And I have to, I have to eat that myself. So when I do wake up on them nights and reaching over there and I'm slapping my cell phone and my laptop and the other pill and all that, damn. Well, you did that, though. You know what I mean? So I, <laughs> I, I'm making up, I'm making, I'm making up one side of my bed and shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, Self-inflicted, like, huh? I did. Oh, <laughs> well, I'm single because my partner has not found me. You know what I'm saying? Like. Say I've been, yeah, I'm I'm waiting on, you know, my partner to find me. And another problem is when I say I don't want to necessarily be married again, people look at me like I'm crazy. And I'm like, no, I want a partnership this go around. I don't want a marriage because marriage has expectations that I ain't trying to fulfill no more. And not only that, but the dating pool has shit in it. Like, oh, for real. Man, girl, who you telling? Like, it's so when you, when you say dating, though, like when you say dating, are we, are we, when you say dating, is, is, is dating one person or no, dating? I date, I date multiple people. And so my thing is like, everybody just wants to have sex. Nobody wants to get to know anybody anymore. Nobody. It's like we had a first conversation and you already trying to come to my house to, you know what I'm saying? Netflix and chill. (laughs) Or, you know what I'm saying? We go out on a date and, you know what I'm saying? A couple of times and you think I'm supposed to give it up. Like, I understand people are doing it nowadays and, it's people out there like, you know, dang, you know, he fine as whatever, you know, he can get it. But at the same time, just because you can get it don't mean you ain't got to work for it, bro. Like, come on. And it just gets, it's, it's, it's terrible out here for us. 
And I got gotten like mm-hmm. I hang around a whole like most of the dudes, I mean people I know are guys. So I hear it from both ends. Like my homeboys say the same thing. Like it's chicks out here that just be wanting to smash, and I'm sitting here trying to cuddle, and she just wanting to smash. <laughs> and you know. I get that, but then it's like, and they say it's always like opposites the track. You know what I'm saying? Like, you want a good dude, but you always get the hoe. You want a good woman, but you always get the hoe. Like, that's just how it seems to be out here nowadays. But that go to that go back to that. Hey, we looking for one thing, but because it don't look like what you think it look like, then you do the other thing. That that's what we what we 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 think about relationships. Okay, so the only thing I discriminate is on is height. Okay, like I'm five right. ten, like I'm I'm five <laughs> ten, so I don't necessarily want to do that's five five because you know what I'm saying. It's like I tried it, like I wasn't shallow and was like, no, I'm not doing this, and I've tried it. But when I had to bend down to kiss him, it just did something to me. Like, hold on, hold on. Okay, still, that's a preference. Hey, hey, no tell, no tell. Hell, no hell, no tell. Okay, shit. Nah, cause sorry, she went I'm too sorry, direct. No, no, she went too direct. I'm five five. Don't do that. Don't do me. Don't do me. And you, you know you kind of cute. Don't do me. I'm bad. Guy. But I'm six two in the chair. I'm six two right here. You know what I'm saying? But I think that that's okay for us to have to have preferences. You know, like right. if they, if you're right. open and honest with a man, you know, let him know, like, hey, I prefer this, and you know, it. I, that's where the honesty comes in. Where don't don't let me take you out on three or four dates and then come to tell me you don't like tall men. Right. That's where right. sometimes right. men get it Absolutely. is that we we're not hearing that honesty from women from the jump. But you all expect for us to be honest and tell you I got three kids. I got five, you know, three baby mamas. Why you ain't tell me this from the beginning? So it, it so so it, it has to be understood that. It's okay to to want to develop a friendship and things like that. But if this man is taking you out on a date and you accept it, you have to understand that he may be coming from a point to where he wants something. Hey, I'm dating with a purpose, meaning that purpose is to get to know you. And if and if the front, if he if you know that you gotta bend down to kiss him from meeting him at the restaurant, let him know from that jump. <laughs> Hey, see, I might, I might don't mind standing on my tiptoes. I mean, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. You know, and this, uh, and this is the other thing. Like, okay, so I'm gonna say this. Even though I say I date multiple people, like, but for real, y'all will be surprised. Men do not shoot their shot. Like, even huh. they'll say hey all day, or you know what I'm saying, be like hey beautiful. But that's like the far as the the conversation go. It's like, bro, if you want my number, just say you want my number. Well, if well, you want to hold a conversation, bro, hold a conversation. I can't, bro. Where are you I from? I'm from Charlotte. You're from Charlotte, yeah. okay? Because I've been. I- was saying that for a very long time coming from the DC area and moving here. I was like, these men down here don't know how to step up. They don't know how to say what they want, they so forth and so on. They don't. Um, and that's because I guess I'm used to aggressive men, maybe. Um, so when I moved down here, it's, I have in DC. it's not at even me from across the bar, but won't say nothing. You it's walk the past me ten thousand times to make a comment, but you don't say nothing. <laughs> but we'll stare listen, you yeah. down. At the same time, we'll stare you down, but won't say a word. It hey, listen, won't irritate right. my soul. We don't take rejection well. We don't, we don't take rejection well. It but if you never put yourself out there, then how will you know? You know what I'm saying? Not, not even right. Right. Not right. yes or no. <laughs> Right. Well, I disagree but, but with that whole thing. not stepping thing. As as a, as a southern gentleman and Say growing that, up in the south, and one of the <laughs> things that my it, I learned how to talk to women from my grandmother and my aunts, right? So uh, another one of my side jobs I do. I'm a stand up comedian, and I, my dad used to always tell me, "If you make them laugh, you got them." <laughs> but with that. Okay. In this day and time, I believe that one of the one of the reasons why men are falling off with some of the communication is because of things like this. Back in 1985, we weren't getting on no computer talking face to face with people. You had to ask for the number, 
Yeah, you had mm-hmm. to get on that phone and work. Yeah, you got to wake you up. Have to go through the you got to go through the You got to catch the next morning. You got to go sit at lunch. You got to do it. But now it's hey, what you next. doing? You <laughs> put the phone down. You know what I'm saying? You go straight to that. So that's why some people that I do talk to, they're surprised. Oh my bad. Um, when I can carry on a real conversation and. I, I, some people call it a nerd in school. I called it. I didn't want to die because my mama told me, you better make these A's and B's. So <laughs> I'm a smart young man. I'm a black young man. Um, I love women. And I love to talk. I love to have real conversations. It ain't always going to the first thing, hey, you know, what's your name? Where you live? I want to come to your house. I want to sleep with you. I got more time than that because I just wasn't raised like that. And I love to talk. Woman, 90% of it is is mental stimulation. Like, once you stimulate the head, you know what I'm saying, the body will follow. On, and most right. people don't know it's that. A game. They want to stimulate right. the body first yeah. and right. then but worry about the head thing. later. But here's the thing. A lot of, a lot of times, if a man sees a woman and he say, hey, beautiful, or he looking at you, he may not necessarily want to approach you and get your number he just he may just be admiring your beauty so it's not all the time that that men will see a woman and stare at her he may like the way your breasts look he may be looking at your ass he may be looking at the way your lip he may be be looking at your beauty without trying to get to that point and but but that's the thing i think sometimes women think that because a man looks at her and don't shoot this shot he may have a girl but he i mean i think god gave us eyes to to recognize beauty and not always feel like we have to take that next step. Because again, like the brother said, if, if a man is conversational, if he knows he got his shit together here, here's the thing that with me, you know, when I go to the club or when I used to go to the club and go out, I got tired of approaching women this is me. I got tired. If a woman looked at me and she smiled, bring your ass over and talk to me. That, And I'm not saying that should happen. I'm saying for me, I felt like I deserve to have that approach saying, how you doing, handsome? You smell good tonight. You look good. And then what happens, you know, I will carry on that conversation and I will say that we as men, we don't get that as often. We there is well, is very rare. It. It's very common. So some, when sometimes when you do that, guys, when I was think doing... that you just want to smash. Like when you do approach a guy and you know what I'm saying, and tell him that he's mm-hmm. handsome or buy him a drink or something to that factor. Like they automatically say, "Yeah, I got it." You know what I'm saying? She came over here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Holler at you, boy. So yeah, I got it. And just like you, yeah. sometimes it just may be conversation that I want. It right. may be the fact that you are a nice looking man. So, yes, I sit down, buy you a drink or, you know what I'm saying? So it goes the same way. But if nobody mm-hmm. ever says anything, then right. you don't know. Society mindset. Yeah. Crazy mindset society right now. I, when I was single, when I was single, I had no problem approaching a man because I, after being here in North Carolina, Charlotte, North Carolina for for a year or two and saw how non-aggressive men were here that I started to speak up. And I have no problem doing that. I had no problem doing it when I was home. But there's when you do that, it usually comes with some kind of expectation on the other went other end that if I do approach you that, you know, I want to go home with you or something like that. When that might not always be the case. So Sometimes when you shoot your shot, maybe you just need to say ahead of time, oh, by the way, I'm not trying to get with you, not trying to take you home and take right. you to bed, but you're Make good it looking. <laughs> Make it up front. Or you're a I bit my tongue a lot in my life because I have, I am, I am five five. You feel me? You feel me? <laughs> and, but listen. <laughs> But it gave me opportunity to talk. Yeah, I'm mentally stimulating you. I'm taking you to another space. I can, you know what I'm saying. But but I I I, I that has been a um a space in my life that probably prevented me from saying a lot to women a certain level because 
of of the height thing because that's a big thing with women. Women women like tall men. You know what I'm saying? No, women that. like confidence. Is it like I was going to say? It's a difference between Girl. being aggressive and being confident. Like being aggressive is just like it's being a bugaboo getting on my nerves. But being confident and going after what you want. <laughs> That's sexy, like you know what I'm saying, and we know the difference mm -hmm. because of the vibe we get, the energy we get from you, conversations mm -hmm. that we may have, you know. But yeah, you start just nin, 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 in my ear, yeah, you, you become <laughs> aggravating. You, That's my it goes way. back to it goes back to the guys. Like for me, mm. like rejection don't sit well with me, especially because don't hit me with the oh you cute, oh I'm cute now because I'm five five. That's what's up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I said I that before I found no. out. No, no, what I'm I'm just saying, baby. I had to deal with that. I'm not saying I'm not saying I had to deal with that. Like, oh, if you was if you was if you was about yeah, yeah, if I would, but I'm not. Well, so here's the thing. So here's the thing. I don't like I said, I'm trying to figure your name. You saying he said you said he was cute, but that was before you knew he was five five. Would you entertain going out on a date with him, knowing that that's not your preference? Because I am not a shallow person and I know that when you get to know somebody, it's not all about physical because physicalities go away. So I'm not a shallow person. So at the end of the day, I may just end up meeting a real cool person who end up being my friend. And it doesn't mean that, you know what I'm saying, I wouldn't enjoy his company. Just because that's just like even if he was five, ten or six feet, I would go out with him still and say that, hey, it may not work out, but I still may have met a cool friend at the end of the day. Okay. Right. Now, 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 here's the thing. Now, I'm I'm very confident. Now, I just said how I move, like in, in general, and in, in, in I'm very confident, and and I'm okay in this city, and any other city, and any other place you drop me off at. Your boy, good. You know what I mean? That I'm all right with that. And and I am confident enough to say, hey, this woman right here is a good friend. Like you, you know what I'm saying? Like my best friend is a female, and you know, we don't it, we cross no lines at no space. Like that's my you know, people, and, and, and right now in my life, the majority of my friends are women because I, I don't I don't got time with the guys to figure out, do you love me the same, bro? I, I, I love you. I respectfully lo love you, bro. I take one for you, give one for you. But to find out you don't love me the same, I don't got time to figure that out. When I get to talk to women, it's natural. It's a natural instant. It's a natural space for me. I get to really be honest about who, where I'm at, who I, who I'm dealing with, and where, where, whether that's going to a bedroom or never going to a bedroom. I'm cool mm -hmm. with that. You know what I'm saying? Respectfully, you know what I mean. That that friendship for me is really, really cool. You know what I mean? And, but, but like Daniel and, and Tony, just meeting black men now in a new area, I push to get black men to get together. And, and do like I, I'm working on a man's trip. I want to do a man's trip, and the only other place I can think about men going together is somewhere in Florida. You know what I'm saying? But I, I try to explain to men like women do that. They, they will take that time <laughs> and and go somewhere and and and, and bond uh, yeah. as 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 women and bond. And I think men, if we took that time to do that, I think that would be really dope and, and give men an opportunity to. Um, express themselves and say stuff that they not saying and maybe make another confident man that pushes them to another level or help another man by saying some great stuff so i, I look forward to trying to push that so if anybody want to help out in that area let me know well i i wouldn't mind helping getting that going for you but i'm a female so but you know, I know, I know a lot of men that would appreciate that. So just yeah, me too. <laughs> tell them I got two, I got I got two buses right now. I got a twenty passenger and a twenty one passenger. We can load them up. Okay, we can take care of that guys, and we can go find something dope. The weekend and head down to Miami, yeah. huh? Make it make it make sense. <laughs> well, you know, we can load up both of those buses, and you put the females on one trip, and you put the fellas on another trip, and you know what I'm saying? We go in two separate directions. And you know what I'm saying? No, <laughs> you don't want to go to several reasons. Say that. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem now. We're going in two separate directions. <laughs> yeah, right, so we party with them. We party on our own. I don't want to do that. <laughs> so we totally did not hit on anything that we were supposed to talk about. <laughs> but it was a good conversation. But this, yeah, was. this was really good, good dialogue. And um, this was our first in the PR Talks Relationships because this is actually something that we plan to kick off next month. Um, but 
because of my own personal situation and really wanting to talk to my friends and get that feedback, um, I decided to do it a little bit earlier. So um, I really, really appreciate y'all coming on tonight and sharing your experiences. I hope that when I extend the invitation again, which I will, we'll be extending that invitation very soon for us to talk about relationships again, um, that you will be open to doing that. But we learned a lot, of, a lot tonight, I think. I know I did. Um, you know, yeah. really about how men and men and women, how we we do see things differently and that it really takes communication for for us to be able to connect and for us to be, to be able to bond. Um, you know, even the way we might view relationships and the way we might understand things to be, for example, the unconditional love, what my definition of unconditional love was different to Daniel, was different to Ro, was different to, you know, Tony. So having those conversations up front with the person that you're interested in. One thing I've always told men when I was dating is be up front with me. You know, if you right. want, if you just want, just tell me you want sex. If you just want a casual thing, just say you want a casual thing. Right. I respect your honesty and your bluntness over you giving me some bullshit and you end up doing something that's going to, that's going to make us no longer be whatever it is we be. Be honest up front. Like, like Daniel said, say who you are, say what it is that you're, you're looking for and, and stand in it. And if it's not for you, it's not for you. Um, and we also tonight, you know, really covered that, you know, our childhood experiences do have a lot to do with how we enter into relationships as an adult. Um, they can shape what kind of relationships that we get into. Um, I would hate to say, especially women, but I know a lot of women who end up marrying men like their fathers. And so if your father and you did not have that close bond and relationship and there were some things that your father displayed that might not have been healthy or healthy, you tend to be attracted to those men as an adult because that's what you're used to. Does that mean that it's right? Sometimes it's right. Ro, she had a, a, a great example of who a father is, whereas Erica did not have a good example of a father, you know? And so that, that's something else that was brought out tonight is that our childhood, our upbringing can have a lot to do with the way we enter into relationships, but we have to be able to know and have that knowledge of that when we're going into relationships um, and the possible effects that that can have on your relationships and how you see things. Um, yeah, so I really, really appreciate. Yes, yes, Dan. Can Was I just say Daniel something right quick? Yeah. Yes. Can I just say something right quick? Um, you know, I think I'm I'm the only one probably on the panel that is actively uh, in a relationship. If and was that correct? Everyone else was single, and I I don't want to leave without saying that. Um. Oftentimes we feel that there is not love out there for us. And oftentimes, you know, people come into our life for a reason. Like we, we have heard all the things about relationships, about love, about who's this and who's that. And one thing that has helped me from, from healing from a heartbreak is that I, I don't take the ending of a relationship as serious as I am learning about that relationship. So, and I had an older woman tell me, you know, keep doing it until you get it right. And sometimes we are that, that, that black sheep that's saying, Oh, you've been married two times. You got five kids, you got this, but we look out into the world and it's not really pronounced, but oftentimes though people will find their love after the third, after the fourth, it's like when we give up, in our mind, like there is no one out there for us, that may not be because in life, we go through different stages of our life where the person that you're with from 25 to 35 may not grow with you and you outgrown them. And I believe that that's God saying, you know, I take you through these stages just like a job or just like anything else to learn that. And I think as humans, when we use the word marriage, it's kind of like, everything else disappears. Like, you know, you get married and, you, and your husband ain't supposed to cheat or your wife ain't supposed to leave you and all that stuff. And that's not the truth. Sometimes we have to accept mm -hmm. life 
and the reality of it is that we have no control over it. We have to wake up every day and enjoy that while we have it because we don't know when the day that person could pass away. That person could come up with the illness and we have to just focus on that and just keep on moving and understand that sometimes happiness may come from multiple people because there are people in our lives that have been in different relationships. There's people that have been married for 40, 50 years. Is that common? No, but can it be possible? Yes. And, and it takes sometimes for others, it takes longer, different relationships for people to learn. So as we all leave today, think about what you have learned from your past relationship to help you heal, to go into the next relationship and make sure you, you don't do that if you felt that that person could not respect that part about you. Not telling you to change or be somebody else, but understand that as, as I didn't respect, I'll just be honest, when I was younger or when I was married and I used to have sex, it was selfish. I just wanted to get mine, whether it was two minutes or three minutes. Then after dealing with different relationships, I realized no, nah, Daniel, you got to make this 30, 45 minutes. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because I had to grow from that. I had to realize I couldn't be that same person. So unless we're willing to change for ourselves, you're not going to, you're, you're not going to keep that person. That person is not going to stay with you because you're still dealing with your old self. And as we know, old is not going to always be better than the new. Good right. point. Good point. Good point. Um, for if anyone would like to share, what is a lesson that you that you have learned in your relationships that you're going to take forward with you? And that's how we're going to close out tonight. Anybody? I'm no longer allowing anyone when I say anyone to stop me from doing what it is that I was called to do, what my purpose is, what my destiny is doing. Mm -hmm. I allow my last my past relationships to dictate to me how far I could go, where I will go. And I'm not doing that anymore. Like, you know, what I'm saying that's all I can take from it. Like I'm going forward. Good point. And I'm glad that you have, cause you are a phenomenal lady. Y'all have to come out and see, and see Miss Rowe perform. Um, you can feel her passion in her music and she's dope on top of that. So, um, uh, yes, no I'm so glad that you are, you are I'm living gonna, your I'm truth. I'm going to see what that 510 look like. <laughs> 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 hey, Marcus. Look, 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 I did music for a long, long time. I actually had two deals in, in, in my earlier days, but I, I did a wrote a song in 2006 and um, I just revamped it and, and directed a video for it. I would like to send it to y'all because it got a lot to do with that whole healing process and that mental health space. And um, if, if, if we hadn't, I, I tried to jump on and click the friends with anybody that I've seen in the page. And if I haven't, I'm gonna go back and try to make sure I um, befriend you, and I want to send you to send you that stuff too, especially to the artists that's that's on here. Um, I don't think I could do a deal or nothing right now because <laughs> I'm too old. <laughs> but never, I wanna, never, too old. Never, never, never too old. old. Yeah, I want to send that to y'all because it's really, really a dope uh, uh, image, and I want y'all to see see that. So, and and I and I, and I take all feedback. Um, I'm definitely one of the artists that can respectfully accept uh, creative criticism, but I want you to see it because it's really dope. So, I just wanted to say that. Okay, that, that sounds like we need to get you out to a pop uh, artist showcase so we can hear what you got going on over there. And it's not you're never too old. You're never too old to to do what you love to do. Never. Mm -hmm. You're never too. Old. Um, would anybody I else like to? like to offer I, their their takeaway from their relationships going forward i take away that i i have to understand that when i speak stuff that i want that god is on the universe is going to send it to me and i have to be ready and prepare for that so if you say you want a good man or you want a good woman you have to understand good you got to find out what her good is and see if that's acceptance you got to find out what his good is not perfect because no one is perfect mm -hmm. so i've realized for me that when i spoke what i wanted in my next relationship i got it. Uh, and, and this this is my advice to y'all real quick don't Sometimes we try to force puzzle pieces in our puzzle. They mm. don't go right there, but they go somewhere. 
You mm. hear me? Say that again. Just, say that again. Say that again. <laughs> we sometimes we force puzzle pieces in places that they don't go. They might don't yeah. go right there, but they go somewhere. Respectfully yeah. for yourself, you know what I mean? And and, and I grasp that today, you know what I'm saying? And I eat that. So. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I, I I I have to agree with you, even though you you just learned that today. <laughs> yes, I was this I, I was this that. years old. I was this years old when I got that. One. <laughs> yes, Erica. Um, I think for me, I just want to be better. That's all. My focus right now, honestly, is just myself. I just want to be better. I want to be better all the way around. And as Ro said, when he finds me, you know, I'll be better. That's all I want to do is just be better. And you will. Yes. Self you will. Self-love. Yes. Thank you. And I think it's really important. And I and I've I've told this to my daughter and I've, you know, I've talked to other friends about this. When you get out of a relationship. Don't let that be it, because you're hurting and you're in pain. The reason for you to jump into someone else, um, take that time to heal. Take that time to re really love you, love on yourself and love yourself. Um, because after every re relationship, we lose something, we win something, um, we gain something, we gain understanding, its perspectives, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I respect you, Erica, for knowing that you're in a place where you need to be about self. And that's okay. Just like me, I'm in a place now where I need to be about self because I have a lot of healing to do. I know that you have a lot of healing to do. We all have a place where, you know, um, when we go from an end of relationship to a new relationship, we all have to have that, that healing process in between and not just they say, what is it? The best way to get over someone is to get under someone. I think that's the most stupid statement that I've ever heard. But a lot of people carrying it. baggage. Of people you're carrying baggage. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So one way, so we can at least say something about what our topic was supposed to be tonight, was that healing. Don't 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 go up under somebody else. Heal for yourself. L love on yourself. Take care of yourself. Implement and make uh, self care and self love a priority while you're healing. Um, because you don't you don't want to take that baggage and that hurt and that pain into your ne your next relationship. It might not be all gone, but trying to be a better person and be a better you before you move on um, is definitely something that I think everybody can benefit from. Miss um, uh, Gaia, were you going to offer your takeaway from your last relationship going into a new? Um, Equally yoked, that is so important and so relevant to me. Um, someone being equally yoked and not just physically, um, but spiritually, because where I'm at spiritually, I need a partner that can not necessarily match me, but can meet me where I'm at on a spiritual level, because sometimes I can get really deep um, and spiritually inclined and I can lose a person. And I want to be, uh, I want, my, my soul needs to be fed, you know? So if I'm able to pour into you and feed you um, and feed your soul, this wonderful soul food that I have, I need you to be able to do the same for me. So I've learned that that is very important. That's more important than you just being able to pay my bills because I've experienced that. I experienced the man catering to me and doing all these wonderful things, massaging my feet, like great. But spiritually, we were not equally yoked. And that's very valuable and important to me. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Tony, you want to offer your takeaway going into another relationship? Again, my own experience from learning is, you know, the, the chance for growth, uh, self-acceptance, uh, owning up to your own whatever, um, and and being able to forgive both ways, you know, and that's it for me, and fun, and peaceful. <laughs> Yes, yes. Well, I thank all of y'all for coming on peace? tonight. Oh. <laughs> uh, 
Um, all of you had different perspectives, whether it comes from a spiritual place, a self-care place, um, age, wisdom, family, backgrounds, all of that good thing, all of those good um, uh, topics that have come up tonight. Um, I'm already sending y'all the dates for our next scheduled PR talks <laughs> to see if many of y'all are interested in coming back online because um, this was really good tonight. Um, it definitely was helpful to me. And I know we had a lot. We had a lot of viewers tonight. So um, we're not the only ones that like to talk about relationships and um, like to have adult mature conversations about relationships. There's other people that have been watching all night. So thank y'all for being on tonight, especially last minute. And um, I really and truly, truly appreciate all of you. Um, we are going to, if you can tell real quickly how people can find your businesses. Uh, Tony, go. Uh, I have one on um, Facebook. It's Jackson Photography. It's on Facebook. You'll see it. It's, um, once you open it up, I'm the only one that has a, a bride and a groom actually standing in front of the um, um, as my profile picture with Jackson Photography. And you'll see me. <laughs> great, great. Erica, show, tell everybody how they can find you. Facebook. It's Arthur Erica A. Meadows. Um, my website is infinite dimensions 22, the numbers two and two.com. Thank you, Miss Rowe. Tell everybody how they can find you. You can find me at Roe P. Hill on Facebook or on IG at Roe P. Hill or together dot 621. And Marcus, make sure you put that information down because I need to hit you up about some stuff with my son. Absolutely. I just, <laughs> I, just, I, I, I just put the, um, the video and my number because I want some feedback from everybody after you after you get it after you get check the video out I'll just put both of those in um in the text with everybody so please send, send me some information. Well, I'm, I'm gonna listen to it, Marcus, and we have an artist spotlight like we had today where I actually like to have um, the artists live if they are able to. So I'll be inviting you back. I'm gonna listen to the song and see what episode we have coming up that I think will be a good perfect. Uh, perfect fit for and i'm gonna invite you out november 30th for our vibes artist showcase so that you can perform I'm your coming. piece sir mm -hmm. <laughs> we will see gaia you heard him say that you heard him say he's coming right i'm looking forward to me and i'm i'm definitely i'm definitely i'm definitely coming right. what we got, what's the... huh say that again marcus i didn't hear you i was I, i'll wait but i was asking for the it's a date coming up for somebody to be performing right the 30th. Yep, yes. I was dropping in the chat, but it's okay. November 30th. It's going to be okay. from um, 8 till 10 at First and Goal, the Vibes Artist Showcase, but I'll drop it in the, the chat too. Um, yeah. Marcus, tell everybody how they can find out about uh, Building Boys to Men. Building Boys to Men, Girls on the Grow, the umbrella is Royal Connection. I'm out here at ground zero, y'all. I'm out here dealing with these kids, the ones with the guns, the ones that's A, B, on the road students, the ones that's standing on the edge of the fence. I'm dealing with them all. I love doing it. Um, uh, I, my, my number's public. My page is public. Um, I am not a role model. I am a real model. Um, so um, Facebook is King Mac. Um, and I'm so old school. My number is 704-615-6116. Get at me. Whatever, whatever it is. I'm in. Thank you. Thank you, Gaia. Tell everybody how to find you. Um, you all can find me on social media anywhere. Gaia, G-A-I, capital Y, A-H. Um, whether it's for hair, it's Gaia's braids. Music is Gaia777. Um, that's Facebook, Instagram. So if you type in with that capital Y A H, I usually pop up YouTube. We got some videos and stuff on there. So nice, nice. I'm looking forward to meeting you on November 30th and seeing you perform. Um, Mr. Daniel, tell everybody how they can find you. If you type in uh, Smith Environmental Solutions in your Google. You'll find my Instagram, my Facebook, my Twitter, my YouTube. That um, So you can also do that. I also have a boat that I take people out in the summertime. You can find that at Green Guy 
uh, Boat Rise. That's G R E E N G I. You can find that on Instagram. Look at my pictures, and all that is connected, you know, through my personal name on Facebook, Daniel Smith. So um, that's it. Had a great time with every talking to everyone today. Look forward to meeting y'all in the future. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you'll be able Likewise. to make it out in number two. Um, I, I think we I got everybody. So for us, you can find the private room. It's the private room with Tiffany. And it looks like sometimes, for some reason, there's a two pages showing up that I closed. It should only be one. So the private room with Tiffany will always have the current episode. And it's the private room, WTB, which is my initial. So please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Um, we are going to be having on Thursday some ad survivor advocates are going to be sharing their why, why they are advocates. That's going to be a special ep episode this Thursday at 730. So we're going to end with our artist spotlight by Geechee Flame. And please stay on um, panelists to listen. Y'all can rock out to it. And at the end, we're going to do thumbs up, thumbs down, and that's how we're going to end for the night. So thank you, everybody, for listening. And please listen to our, our artist, artist Spotlight song by Geechee Flame. Flames. That's if the button will work. Hold on one. Yeah. Oh, there it goes. I'm like, what I'm supposed to do? No. If I ain't even have... Okay. I was thinking to myself to make it through because I ain't never follow rules. See, like I always want to lose on the road to success. I took a you because I'm just trying to be that dude to clean my mind. Clean ain't throwing love, but most of love was in their mind. If they really cared, it would be there when I was down. Now I'm straight and out. Can y'all hear this song? Yes. Okay. Like a fraction, showing fake love. I start subtracting, moving just how they act. Real nigga never lack. And I take you out before I'm bleeding gas. Pick this because I'm really trying to free my mind. What was I like when I was down? No one was by my side. I pray for peace because it's the only thing that I can buy. But peace is free. And yeah, I knew, but shit was on my mind. Pain, mm -hmm. kill, love hurts. Just don't waste your time. Like I pray you be the very play. best. Never be too shy. They shot my father in his head, and yeah, he's still alive. We was a part that brought us close. He done apologize. So I'm just trying to tell you things could work. No matter the worth. If you really care, show that person what hurts. Because you never know. When 